I was now retired and single, with a cushy golden parachute for my black-hearted career in Wall Street banking. I lived the life in a posh 10th floor Miami condo, nestled within the confines of a secure gated community. From my balcony, I enjoyed the panoramic views of the city skyline, a testament to my wealth and success. Each evening, I would unwind with a Vsop cognac in hand, reveling in the comfort and luxury that surrounded me and gloating over the bloody spoils of my ruthless climb to the top. People had lost their careers, and sometimes their lives, at the stroke of my pen or the nod of my head. I didn't care. Then, one evening, as I stood peering out over the darkened street below, I noticed him. A grotesque figure sprawled in the gutter across from my building, like a marionette abandoned in a nightmare. His ragged clothes clung to his emaciated frame, stained and torn, making him appear like a specter from a nightmarish vision. The streetlights cast eerie shadows across his face, accentuating the gauntness of his features and the hollow, unblinking intensity of his eyes. An involuntary shiver ran down my spine as I casually watched him and sipped my cognac. I had initially dismissed him as just another pathetic soul beneath my concern. However, as the days slowly crept by, I observed a gradual, eerie change that greatly unsettled me. The man wasn't static. His scarecrow body would rise, as if manipulated by an invisible puppeteer, and he would then proceed to cross the murderously busy thoroughfare towards my residential complex. Soon, he was struck by a furniture truck and catapulted ten feet into the air, crashing down upon the lane divider. He managed to pull himself into a seated position, so I disengaged from this horror tableau until the third evening. When I returned to my balcony with my drink in hand, I noticed that the man had risen to his feet once more, seemingly unfazed and unbroken. It was then that he paused for several minutes, training his cold, unblinking focus upward and upon me as I perched high in my rook's nest. Then, as if by some malevolent design, the ragged man's herky-jerky movements began again, and he proceeded forward into the fatal fray of more oncoming traffic. Despite the violence and chaos of the street, he moved with an eerie calmness, unaffected by the injuries that should have crippled him. Why, that chap is coming straight for me. I gasped into my goblet of wine, my laughter erupting uncontrollably. Another vehicle, a large SUV this time, struck the man and violently flipped him over its roof. Again, the driver did not stop, and when the homeless man came to rest in the roadway, he lay face down on the asphalt. For a minute... It was as though nothing could deter him from his eerie advance. Each day brought him closer, from the gutter to the lane divider, braving the dangerous traffic once more, enduring more collisions, yet always rising again and again. And then, after several days, he had finally made it to the devil strip on my block, staggering out of my sight and behind the thorny hedge that shielded the perimeter of my complex. I watched from the safety of my balcony as a mixture of fascination and dread knotted my stomach. His persistence had defied logic, unnerving me more than any supernatural apparition could. That was all I saw of the ragged man, until three months later. As hurricane season swept in with its relentless ferocity, I retreated into the opulent confines of my home, rain lashing against the huge walls of glass, wind howling like a banshee. That stormy night, I dozed off on my enormous couch, lulled by the symphony of the storm. I awoke suddenly, disoriented, to the sound of the balcony door sliding open. My heart thundered in my chest as I sat up, scanning the dimly lit room. And then, I saw him, standing in the faint light. His clothes were torn and muddied, his face battered and bruised. Yet, his eyes burned with a determination that chilled me to the bone. He was real, flesh and blood, and yet there was an otherworldly quality to him. He moved closer, each step deliberate. As he stood before me, inches away, his gaze bore into mine with a chilling intensity. There were no words spoken, no need for explanation. His presence alone spoke volumes, the embodiment of my guilt, of the consequences of my callous indifference. The jump scare never came. Instead, the horror unfolded in the silent confrontation between us, in the harsh reality of my own moral decay laid bare. 
as dawn broke over the city, casting long shadows against my once secure sanctuary. I sat trembling, haunted by the ghost of my own conscience. For in the end, the greatest terror was not in the supernatural, but in the undeniable truth that my past had finally caught up with me.